Hello, Calculus fans. This is going to be a very quick walkthrough of the fall 2017 exam uh, for Math 125. I have a few students asking questions about this on my discussion board. And since there were a few different questions being asked, I thought I would just make a video and going through the whole thing. Now, I just made this video, and then I realized I did not capture the screen. <laughs> so I did it. I went through the exam in about 20 minutes in that video. So now we're going to do it again. I'm going to do it faster. So I'm not going to focus on full explanations. We're just going to go through an exam quickly. So I go through more details in other videos. So let's just go. Since I've already done it, I erased my work. <laughs> and I, uh, I'll do it again. Here's the answer. Okay, so this is about simplifying and integrating. If I was a student, I would immediately simplify. Boom, I would rewrite and say, oh, there's a five halves. There's an x to the negative one third dx. I would say I know how to integrate this. That's seven x. I know how to integrate this. It's five halves x to the four thirds and there would have to be a three fourths in front of it. There'd be a plus c and I might say, but I'm a little stuck on this one. Now, if I was doing this myself, I would just write the answer. I would write e to the negative six x and I would say, oh, because there's a negative six there, if I took the derivative, there'd be a negative six out in front and I would do this. So I would do it in one step. Um, 15, oops, I did it. See, this is why <laughs> I didn't do it wrong the first go around. I did it wrong this time because I'm trying to go too quickly. Three halves. Okay. Um, and this would be 15 fourths X to the two thirds plus C. But if you got stuck on this one, what you would do is a substitution. You would say negative six X. You would say du is negative six DX. You would say DX is one over negative six du, and you would get the integral from e to the u du, and there'd be a negative one six, and then you'd have negative one six e to the u. Again, I'm not trying to do every detail. You'd substitute, and you would you'd get this anyways. You might say I thought there was a negative, but there was a minus. Fairly quick problem. If you're unsure, you could take the derivative and see it matches up. Next one you should see right away. It's a substitution. In these situations, it's best to pick the denominator, especially since the derivative of the denominator is on top. You're gonna get a negative two sine of two x dx. Uh, so if I was doing this myself, I might just throw in a negative two here, but you can also solve for dx. So I get negative one half the integral one over u du, and then it's a negative one half the log, log of u plus c. You should have the absolute values the log of cosine of 2x plus three. Normally in these videos, I go peek at the solutions to make sure I didn't do a silly number, but since I've already done this, I'm just writing it there. This one looks terrible. We actually did this during our review today, and we said it's gotta be a substitution, and there's only two logical choices here. This choice or this choice, but this choice is no good. The derivative is 2x, and I don't see 2x sitting here. So there's really only one choice. It does require you to remember what the derivative of arctangent is, but that would be on your note sheet. And say, well, it's not. It definitely is because the integral of this is on your note sheet. So there we got it. And so if I was doing this problem, I would say the integral, I plug in a zero, arctangent is zero, zero. So this has to be one, one plus zero. This is one plus 12 over pi. Again, I'm trying to go quickly this go around. So apologies that I'm doing that. I just want to get through this. Let's see how fast we can do an exam. Uh, this is going to be pi over 12 times x squared plus 1 du. I got that by moving this to the other side. I cancel. I get pi over 12 and then I integrate 3 halves, 2 thirds from 1 to 4. Uh, 6, so it's going to be pi over 18. This is going to be 4 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves, which is pi over 18, it's going to be 8 minus 1, which is that. Done. So there we go. Substitution, substitution. Uh, yet another substitution. Now this one doesn't look like it's going to work out because the derivative is 4x to the third. So here's a situation where knowing how to solve and do this might help you. Uh, this becomes 1, this becomes 2. This is x to the seventh. This is u squared. This is one over four x to the third dx. And they don't cancel. You're still left with x to the fourth up here. But we know how to salvage that situation. You come over here and say, 
x to the fourth is u minus 1. The integral from 1 to 2 of u minus 1 over u squared du, sorry, and that we can simplify. 1 to 2, 1 over u minus u squared du, and that's the same as u to the negative 2, and now we can integrate 1 fourth. Here you don't technically need the absolute values because you already know the numbers are going to be positive for u, but I'll put them in there. And then it's going to be, this is going to be negative u to the negative 1, but because of this negative it's going to be positive u to the negative 1. One small note, when I'm evaluating, I like to turn back into an algebra student. So I would be thinking the log of u plus 1 over u, because that's easier to plug into. So it's 1 fourth log of 2 plus 1 half minus log of 1 plus 1. And a half minus 1 is negative a half. So you get this. Great. And log of 0 is 1. Is log of 1 is 0. Okay, uh, one question on the discussion board was about this one. Um, I think part of the confusion is the fact that it's a table, but it doesn't matter if it's a table, it doesn't matter if it's a picture, it doesn't matter if it's a function, if it's a table it makes it easier. You do the same steps for all approximations. B minus A over N, so it's two over four, so it's a half. X zero is three, X one is 3.5, three and a half. X two, and you also always get the next point, you compute the width, you always get the next tick mark by adding the width. And I like to do this as a double check. Did I get to the end? Yes. So for this question, at least, I'm only using those numbers. They gave me some extra numbers. And then you should know, you don't need to write this step, but you should know in general that you're trying to do this. And it's just a question of what you're plugging in. In this case, you're plugging in left endpoints. So it's going to be 3, and then 3.5, and then 4, and then 4.5. So let's do that. How about I factor out the width? The width is 1 half. It's this. I pulled it out of all of them. And then f of 3, we're going to look in the table. That actually makes our job much easier. f of 3 is 1. f of 3.5 is 3. f of 4 is 6 f of 4.5 is 9. There's our answer. This is so nice. Let's simplify. So it's going to be 10 plus 9, so it's going to be 19 over 2. Yay. Then we get this question. The moment we see this, we talked about this today in class, we should think the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1, which remember is this. Now some people might be confused, how am I going to plug in 2 if I don't know the formula? But if you plug in 2 here, it's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6. If you plug in 2 here, it's going to be 5. So you need to do f of 6 times 5. And you say, well, where do I get f of 6? It's sitting right up here. There's a 20. So this is going to be 20 times 5. Great. Keep going. Then we have a volume question. We have the x cubed function. We have the x cubed function. This is shells, so it's not part of our first test, but maybe I'll do it anyways, just for the heck of it. This is 2, this is 2, this is 2, this is 8. I'm getting this by plugging in. This is 8, this is 8. Okay, so let's see what it says. We want to rotate it on the y axis. So it, at the time of doing this for this core, for in fall 2024, which is when I'm making this video, we're only including uh, washers and disks in the first exam. And so in this case, you'd have to use y if you're doing the cross-sectional method. And so it'd have to be 0 to 8. It'd have to be pi. And the inner radius would be however far it is from there to there, which is y to the 1 third. And the outer radius would be 2, which is how far it is from here to there. That's my washer. Okay, um, let's talk about going around the line y equals negative 2. Around we go. If we're doing the cross-sectional method, we have to use x. That means this is 0 to 2. Pi times outer radius squared minus pi times inner radius squared. The inner radius is 2. The outer radius is 2 plus however far it is up to the function in terms of x. So that's going to be x to the third. 
This one uh, you don't need to know for um, fall 2024 exam one, but let's say something anyways. Here's y equals negative two. If you're using shells, you're gonna do parallel to the axis rotation, and this is gonna be y, and this is gonna be two. So if you draw a typical cylindrical shell, it's going to be the integral, it's going to be dy, it's going to be 0 to 8, and you're going to do 2 pi. The radius of the shell is 2 plus y. The height of the shell has however far it is from there to there, which would be 2 minus y to the 1 third. Okay, these two things should get the same final numerical answer if you're but on for in fall 2024 this is if you're if 6 3 is included on your test then you do need to know how to do that if it's not you don't compute the area of the region okay so when you see this question you should be thinking parabola and line and your first job would be to graph I would find it helpful to solve one way or another. Either get x by itself or y by itself. And when I look at it, I'd rather get x by itself because this would give me 2 minus y squared. If I tried to get y by itself, it's going to be 2 minus x. And you're going to have plus or minus square root. That looks a little messier to me. Uh, for the other one, it doesn't matter. That one's fairly easy to solve. So I would be thinking sad parabola from y's perspective, and I'd plot some points. When I plug in a zero, I get a two. It was an easy plot, point to plot. I wouldn't necessarily plot those points because I don't know if I need them yet. So I would draw the line y equals x. There we go. Aha, I need those. So we need to combine these. Let's do it. Substitute. It looks like, it's, to me, easier to substitute to get rid of the x. So we get y squared plus y minus two is zero. We get y plus 2, y minus 1. So we get y is either 1 or y is negative 2. And that means this has to be negative 2 and this has to be 1 because x equals y. And now we can see it would be much easier to use y as opposed to x because the left and right never change, whereas the top changes. So I'm going to choose y, negative 2 to 1. And then I'm going to do right minus left, right minus left, and then I'm going to integrate away. This will be part of your test, testing your computation. There's going to be a bit of that. If I plug the ones in, I get two minus a third minus a half. If I plug the negative, and you can use a calculator on the test, I just don't want to get one out. <laughs> I don't like using a calculator. I feel like it slows me down. Uh, minus two. And if I was drop the parentheses, minus one third, minus a half, uh, plus four, minus eight thirds, plus two. This, this, and this make eight. And I have a negative nine thirds, which makes three and a half. So it's gonna be five minus a half, and that's 10 halves, so it's nine halves, good. Okay, then we have an acceleration problem, total distance. So the moment you see that total distance, you should be thinking, the question's asking me for this. One little wrinkle is they didn't tell you the velocity, they told you the acceleration, and they told you the initial velocity. So before you can start the problem, you need to find velocity. So we need to integrate t squared plus 6t plus c, and they told us c was negative seven. So we have t squared plus 6t minus 7 dt, and hopefully you know to immediately find when this is equal to 0. Uh, I think that factors nicely. Uh, t equals 1 and t equals minus 7. So between 0 and 2, the only value is 1. So you do the integral from 0 to 1 of t squared plus 6t minus 7 dt, and you also do the integral from 1 to 2. Now, I've talked in class how you can try to figure out ahead of time what the picture looks like and which one's positive or negative, or just compute them completely separately and then see which one's positive or negative. Both are fine with me. Uh, this is going to be t to the third plus 3t squared minus 7t from 0 to 1. If I plug in a 1, I get 1 third plus 3 minus 7. So 1 third minus 4. 
So 1 third minus 12 thirds, so negative 11 thirds. If I do this one, I get 1 third t cubed, same thing, plus 3 t squared minus 7 t from 1 to 2. I already know when I plug in 1, I get negative 11 thirds. So that's what I'm going to be subtracting. If I plug in a 2, I get 8 thirds plus 12 minus 14. Uh, so that's going to be 8 thirds plus 11 thirds minus 2. 19 thirds minus 6 thirds. And so it's going to be 13 thirds. So I see that I have a positive. I see that I have a negative. Your final answer should be make them both positive. And that's 24 thirds, which is 8. There we go. Key things that have to happen is this and splitting up. Again, I'm trying to go more swiftly here. Uh, last question. Tomato problem. I did this during one of my classes today. The key things here. Ground is 0. This is positive. This is time 0. Under those, the main thing we know is the acceleration is given as negative 32. And then we're supposed to see what that leads to. Well, that leads to the velocity being this and the height being this. And now I'm looking for two initial facts so that I can find C and D. They gave me one initial fact, which is that the velocity is zero. And that tells me that C is zero. So initially I'm like, oh good, I only need to find one other fact. But then they say, uh oh, there's another unknown. So the fact that there's another unknown means there's three things I need. I need to somehow find C, D, and A now. So now I need two more facts once again. What did they tell me? They told me the height at A was 112. And you might say, well, I don't know what A is, but that's all right. We can still plug it in. Plug in an A, we know this is zero plus D. This has to be 112. That's great, that's a fact. I need another fact if I'm gonna find A and D. The other fact is that one second later it hits the ground. This is just like a homework question. So that tells you that negative 16 a plus 1 squared plus d is 0. And now we're done. If we can do the algebra. And I think the algebra is not too bad. We need to combine those two things. How do we do that? We solve for one variable. We substitute in the other. So let's take this and solve. 112 plus 16 a squared. Let's shove it in. Negative 16. While we're at it, let's expand this. a squared plus 2a plus 1. And then we're substituting this in. 112 plus 16a squared equals 0. And then we have negative 16a squared minus 32a minus 16 plus 112 plus 16a squared is 0. And this is just like a homework question, so we might have seen some of these things coming. This is 96, I think. This is 32a. a ends up being 3 because it's 96 over 32. We plug that in. 112 plus 16 times 9. I should know what 16 times 9 is, but let's do this anyways. Ah, yes, I see what it's going to be. 144. So it's 112 plus 144. And 256. Done. That's it. There's the whole exam in 18 minutes. All right.